been moved by numbers, amen? I ain't never been moved by numbers, and I've never been moved by numbers. Yeah, I think what I'm talking about. See, son, if you get moved by numbers, or you get moved by numbers, then you will make decisions that aren't godly, amen? Because you'll be trying to work some stuff out, amen? But we got to get to a point where we move by faith. And if God say it, that's what we're doing. If God don't say it, we're not doing it, amen? And so we're excited about moving into the promised land, amen? How many people getting ready to move into the promised land, amen? I'm so excited about these young men that God got up here. I believe y'all moving into the promised land, amen? I believe y'all moving into the promised land, amen? The, the blessing that God already did, that's just small to compare to what he's going to do, amen? amen. And so y'all just keep being encouraged, amen, because God is going to do a new thing in y'all, amen? Watch God. God is going to do a new thing in y'all. And I, when, when I say something, I guarantee I got to make sure God is speaking through me because, see, that stuff come back to haunt you. And then people start like, man, that me. And see, you got to deal with you. One thing I learned in life, I got to deal with people for the rest of my life. And so since I'm young, amen, I got to make sure I do right. Amen, the old, older guys, they might get messed up here and there, but they ain't got for 10, 15 more years. You know, I, I believe we got a while to go, amen, so we got to do right. And I'm telling not just me, you got to do right, amen. Make sure you have some integrity because people are going to come back and throw that at you. One thing about it, but see, one thing about a lie, a lie will stand for a second. But it'll come tumbling down because it don't got no weight to it. It ain't got no structure to it. It ain't got no thump to it. It doesn't have any something to it. That's why you got to make sure you walk in truth because truth will stand in time. They might believe a lie for a little while, but they're not going to believe a lie forever. Because your integrity going to speak. People are like, oh, man, he did that. They might start believing it for a little while. But after a while, you're like, he ain't did that. Mm -mm. Now nah, that that that's a lie right there. But you gotta run down the opposite truth too. Now y'all be around right here talking about, oh yeah, I'm good and you ain't good. They might believe it for a little while, but they're gonna start seeing some stuff. He was like, oh no, nah, he might not be good. That boy, that took a boy, I'm telling you, because it's gonna speak over time. You can't tell a lie for a long time. Amen. You can't play rich. And you can't play saved. They're going to tell on each other. Amen. Sooner or later, when you start trying to play rich, they're going to speak. Oh, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy that. I'm going to buy Yeah, you can buy that for a little while. But I don't care. If you pay for stuff on credit, at some point, you're going to reach your credit limit. Amen. At some point, you're going to reach your max. Same thing with saved. Right? You can play saved for a little while. But you can't play saved forever. I ain't talking about folks slipping and falling and messing up because I, I've seen some people that slipped and fell that had some integrity because the integrity was not them slipping and falling. The integrity was them getting up. Amen. Got back up, dusted off, and took, took the heat, amen. took the punishment, took the whatever, and kept going. Amen. That told me that person was saved. That person was real. Amen. Folk that ain't right, once they get messed up, they just, they're going to throw in the towel and give up and, because they knew they were right in the first place. Bible says righteous are bold as a lion. Yes. But they said that, that, that sinners, they run when nobody even chasing them. And so when you start running and nobody ain't chasing you, I know what's going on. Amen? You're walking in sin. So let's stop walking in sin. Let's walk in righteousness. Amen? I want to talk about a young man today and an awesome young man by the name of Cain. Cain in the scripture. Amen? Amen. And see, every time I think about Cain, I can't help but think about Abel. Every time I think about Cain, I can't help but think about Enoch and, and think about Adam and think about all those guys. And I'm going to tell you the reason I'm mentioning all those individuals, but the Cain is the person that I want to talk about today. But every time I think about Cain, I also can't stop but thinking about Noah. Now I'm going to tell you why. Because I'm doing my studies this week and I always thought about Cain, right? The word Cain is the opposite of the word, uh, 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 I'm sorry, the word Cain is the word grace, right? And the word Cain comes from the word Han, which is grace, amen? And, and, and the word Noah is the opposite of grace, Noah, right? And, and that's a Hebrew word that, that, that uses the, the uh, vowel het, right? And so that het is a tough, 
want to sound out, amen? You got to almost like you're doing some stuff at the back of your throat, amen? But it's the whole no notion of this thing called grace. Now, if we are to walk in the promised land, we're going to need the grace of God. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? You're not going to be able to walk in the promised land without having the grace of God. But you can't speak grace and think grace and act like grace. You got to be grace. You get where I'm coming from? Because the name Cain meant grace. But grace is a free gift from God. It's a gift that God gives you. It's not a gift that you can get on your own. It's a gift that God gives you, not because you deserve it, but because God is good. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to tell you something. That's sometimes that you're going to give out some stuff to people, not because they deserve it, but because I'm just giving this to you. I love you. Amen? Sometimes you give gifts to your kid, not because they were good to you, but because you said, you know what? I'm going to bless you today. Amen? I'm going to be good to you, even when you're not good. There's times when you got to have some grace on people. Amen? See, God had grace on us. We were living in our sin. We were messing up. And he said, I'm going to die for your sins. I'm going to come and I'm going to be the deliverer that you need. I'm going to not put somebody else up to the task. I'm going to come down from heaven myself, embody the person of Jesus Christ, and I'm going to die for your sins. That's powerful right now, right there. That means that God saying, I'm going to die for your sins. I'm going to be what you need me to be. But Cain was the opposite. Cain was not what God called him to be. Let me get into the scripture. I want to show you what I'm talking about. If you've got the Bible, turn to the fourth chapter of the book of uh, Genesis. The fourth chapter of the book of Genesis. And we're going to talk about some stuff with the brother Cain. Y'all don't remember Cain. One of the first lessons we learned, Cain and Abel. I'm going to tell you something interesting about that. You know Cain more than you know Abel. The story of Cain. Cain did Cain. You know, one thing I had learned one time is that somebody told me God had grace on Cain. Yes. But, I, but God said I didn't have grace on Cain. I'm talking to God, and he said I had mercy. Yes. Y'all know the difference between grace and mercy? See, grace is when I give you something that you don't deserve. Yes. Mercy is when I decide to not give you what you do deserve. So let me break it down. Mercy is when you commit a crime and the judge say, even though you committed that crime, I am not going to punish you. You can go free. Amen. So you say, thank God, thank the judge, thank you for the mercy, for your mercy. Because you could have killed me. You could have destroyed me. Could have messed my life. You could have imprisoned me. But you decide to let me go free. I appreciate you for the mercy that you showed over my life. And God had mercy on the life of Cain. God had grace on Noah. Now let me tell you the grace that God had on Noah. God allowed Noah to walk into the promise. Now how did God let Noah walk into the promise? See, most of the time when I really thought about it, I thought because Noah was perfect and upright in his generation. That's why he got what he got. But I'm going to tell you, the Bible says your righteousness is as filthy right. So it doesn't matter how good Noah was, Noah still didn't deserve the promise. So and I'm trying to break this down because see, sometimes we think that if we do good, we, God owes us something. God, God should give me something because I was so good. I, I did what was right. Now God, where my blessing at? Yeah, God got a blessing, but that blessing is the grace of God. But now, I got to understand that to walk into that blessing, God got some parameters and he got some prerequisites. Amen? Y'all remember college where y'all had to take this class in order to take another class? Before you could take that class over there, you got to take these three classes because they are prerequisites for that particular class. And so there's a prerequisite for walking in the promised land. Right? If you're going to walk in the promised land, you got to walk in faith. You hear what I'm talking about? Cain was a man that did not walk in faith. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to break it down. If you look at Genesis, the fourth chapter, it says this. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. Now, a lot of times, we got to understand what this word means. I'm going to tell you what it means. The word knew 
is when Adam had an intimate knowledge of who his wife was. Adam knew his wife. I told somebody, that's one of the biggest problems right now why we got so many crazy children running around here because we got folk that's hooking up that don't even know each other. I'm talking about people that's hooking up that think they know each other and don't know each other. People that don't take the time to find out who that person is in Christ. See, if you know who that person is in Christ, then some of the stuff you don't have to know as much of because you got an intimate knowledge of who they really are because they are a man of God. They are a woman of God. They talk about folk all the time, talking about, oh, it took two months and, and in two months they, they did this and they got married in two months. Sometimes that's okay. I've seen some arranged marriages work because those people have an intimate knowledge of who the other person is because they are hooked up and the parents made sure, oh, that person has got some integrity, that other person got some integrity. Let's get these two together and let's make it work. Now, I ain't telling you to do that today. Amen. Don't do that. Don't do that. Y'all about to find out yourself. I trust y'all, but I don't trust y'all that much. I got to spend the rest of my life with that person. Amen. Amen. So I got to find that myself. Because if I made the mistake, I can deal with it. Amen. Amen. If you made it, I'm going to run away from it. That's why don't, don't, don't stop making decisions for our children. Amen. When you start making decisions, once they become of age, then they'll run away from the decision that you made. Right. You decide what college they go to, they decide not to go there anymore. You decide what they do and what they do, then they're going to redo that decision. Why? Because when they get they're going to talk, I didn't make this decision. My mama made me do this. And so now they back off of what they committed to. Because it wasn't their decision. But, but sometimes we got to understand that we need to know each other. If you're going to get married, you need to know the person. Bible says Adam knew his wife. He became intimate with his wife. Amen? And then that intimacy, right? See, see, a lot of times we want to have intimacy without having knowledge. Somebody miss what I'm talking about. See, see, we said, you know, before we got saved, we said, I'm just going to go out there and do some stuff. And I'm just going to make some decisions. But you can't just do some stuff and make some decisions because it got some consequences to it. And I always tell folks, you got to know, if you know, if you want to make decisions, find out what the consequences are behind those decisions. I was looking at some stuff and I was going to do some financial stuff, but I said, you know what, before I make these financial decisions, let me make sure that they are right. Because you got people that will come to you and they tell you, oh, you can do this and you can do that and that's okay and, and you can, you know, but, but some of that stuff be illegal. You know what I'm saying? I know somebody wrote me a check back in the days. I'm thinking it must be good. They done wrote me a check. Praise the Lord. Check in the mail. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's good. Amen. So I go and deposit the check in my checking account. And the people come back and tell me, I said, uh, wait, 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 wait a minute. You done did some fraud. Oh, 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 I ain't did no fraud. Somebody sent me a check. <laughs> I ain't had nothing to do with this. But the deal is, I should have looked and I should have researched a little bit. If I looked on the internet one time, I would have saw all over the place, yep, yeah, this, is, this is fraud. They, they send them to you all the time. They, they tell you, they, you know, if you go back and look at the email again, they're going to tell you to send them part of that check. And you thought it was okay, but now you end up doing something illegal, right? And so they end up closing my account. I was mad with them for I ain't did nothing wrong, but now you closing my account. But what I didn't do is I didn't do my research. Can I tell you, I gotta do some research. Check out what you're doing. Make sure everything is right about the stuff you're doing, amen? Get some intimate knowledge of it, amen? amen? Now, it says that when they knew each other, they conceived and bear Cain and said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. I know Adam was happy. You, you know, I can imagine because when I got CJ, I was in there, you know, we had a baby Grace, amen? And, God allowed Grace to pass on, amen, but when we got CJ, I, I was excited about Grace, amen, but when, when, when they said that's a boy, man, I thought I was sitting down, but next thing you know, I was standing up, I was like, whoa, you know what I mean, bone in my bone, <laughs> God done produced a man child for me, and I was excited about it, amen, and so, and so there, there's something about Adam saying, I got a boy. But watch this, is that she'll bear again his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Cain produced plants. And Abel 
made sure he took care of me that God provided. Now watch this. It says that, let me skip down to the fifth verse. But unto Cain, no, let me read that one because that's important. It says, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth in his countenance. Because see, what happened is Cain brought the fruit of the ground and he offered that unto the Lord. But Abel bought the first of the flock. Let me tell you the difference. Cain produced something out of the ground, right? And, and, and so what he gave God was the fruit of the thing that was produced. Now, well, here's the difference. Here's the difference. Abel, he said, I'm not going to give you a fruit of the production. I'm going to give you the whole thing. Y'all get where I'm coming from? And so, Abel sacrificed everything he gave to God. The first of the fruit. But, but he only sacrificed part of it. And here's our problem. That's why we can't walk into the promised land. It's because we're not going to give God everything. We're going to give God part. We don't just do that with God. We do that in relationships. We do that with our jobs. We do that with our stuff. We never give all of us. We only give a part of it. We, we, we do that with love. We don't give all of us. We give a part of us. We, we do that with, we, we just, we're going to make sure we, because we want to save to make sure we ain't getting hurt, so we got to only give a part of us. We want to make sure we are right, so we only going to give a part of it. Amen? If God say, give you a, give an offer, right? You tell you give $100, you say, you know what, I'm going to give 50 Maybe God was halfway wrong, and so I'm going to give 50 because i got to keep a part of it because i got to make sure I'm all right. Yeah. So we got to make sure we're all right. And so we're not doing it God's way. We're creating our own way. And what happens is when you start creating your own way, you're not going to be able to walk in the things that God called you to walk into because it's going to be in a different direction. Somebody hear what I'm talking about. So we got to say, i got to deny my feelings, deny my stuff, deny all that stuff and figure out what does God want from me. The problem wasn't that, that Cain gave something crazy. The problem was Cain didn't give God what he wanted. And so you got to find out what God wants and that's what you give God. We can't be talking about walking in the promised land if you're not talking about doing what God wants us to do to get there. You can't be talking about walking in the promised land without getting the direction of where the promised land is from God. The only person that knows where the promised land is, is God. And so if you're going to get to the promised land, you have to hear the word from God. Amen. you got to hear what God said in your life. And that's what we're going to do. We get to the promised land because we're going to hear what God has to say in our life. God was showing me something. I said, if you walk on the earth, right, notice if you keep on walking straight on the earth, you're not literally walking straight. You're walking in a circle. You hear where I'm coming from? So, so if I walk from one side of the, uh, uh, um, um, the United States to the other side of the United States, by the time I get to the other side of the United States, I'm actually on the whole other side of the globe. Right? And so that's how life is. You think that you're walking in one direction, but you're a little off. And so you can't feel it when you're a little off. You can't feel it because most of the time, how we feel has to do with our reference points. Somebody miss what I'm saying. How we feel about what we're doing has to do with our reference points. That's what I mean. If everything else is staying the same, and, 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 and you moving and it's staying the same then it feels like you're moving faster because you're judging it from your reference point but if everything is moving with you it don't feel like you're moving because everything is staying the same y'all get where I'm coming from and so a lot of times in life what we're doing is we're looking at our reference points here's what I mean you're looking at Bob and saying ooh I'm not as bad as Bob so I must be righteous no, Bob is going backwards. You're not going forward. Can I preach? Somebody missed that. See, Bob is going backwards. You, have you ever been in a car before when another car is going backwards and it feels like you're moving? You're like, oh my God, the car is moving. And then you find out, oh, the car is not moving. 
the other car is just going backwards. Because your reference point made you feel like it was different than it really was. You got to change your reference point. That's why we can't be hanging around unbelievers trying to talk about I'm going to walk in God because it looks like you're doing something different than you actually doing. You be like, man, I'm doing real good. Because you're comparing yourself to the wrong person. Remember, I'll never forget this guy was watching this movie with this kid in the grown brain. He was so excited. He answered all the questions. He tanned it up. He feeling real good. Then he realized he was in the wrong grade. He had already been there before, you know what I mean? He, he, and so his reference point was different. He was in the wrong grade. So we went, listen, we need to graduate from where we are. Can I preach this again? We need to graduate, because God wants to bring us to the promised land, but we gotta make sure we're in the right position to win. so when we graduate, we know we're actually moving, amen? You don't need to get back down to the second grade and you graduate not even the third grade, but that's when it was two years ago because you done slipped and fell so many times that you ain't even realizing that your reference point way off. You think you're excelling because you're looking at how everything's going, but it ain't just what you thought it was. Cain had the same problem. Cain looking at the wrong reference point. My reference point is God. I want to do God. I want to get. The, I want to do all that He wants me to do. But Cain, like, listen, God, I, I did good. I did decent. Look at this amazing offering that I gave you. Shouldn't you be satisfied with what I gave you? Y'all hear what I'm talking about? So you got to understand Cain was this. Cain was like, I gave God something. I could have gave him nothing. But see, we, we mess with Cain about that, but that's how we are too. So we mad sometimes talking about, well, look at the sinners. Look how they make it. Look how they doing good. Look at everybody else. Stop looking at other people and comparing other people to yourself. You can't compare yourself to others. You will never live a good life comparing yourself to everybody else. Everybody different. Everybody got their own path. And then I'm telling you, sometimes you be looking at this person and you think that they're doing real good, but they're not doing as good as they look. They Facebook famous. They don't know nobody. They just know them on Facebook. They ain't got no money. They just got enough to look good on Facebook. They ain't got no stuff. They just look great on Facebook. You mess around and go to their house. I'm talking about when you saw them, you saw all the cars, the money, the stuff. And when you go to their house, you find that there was somebody else's car, somebody else's money, somebody else's stuff. They just took a good picture by it. Me and my wife, when I first met her, we were down there in Napa Valley, amen, and we was, we was at this place, right? We, had, we were by this Maserati, amen? And, and so we took nice pictures by the Maserati. But that wasn't her Maserati, and that wasn't my Maserati. Now when she did, I got mad when she should have got it for me. She got one of her clients the opportunity. She talked to the guy, too. She just went to talk to him. Next thing you know, her client had the Maserati. Say, now you should have, you should have been my, you should have worked for me. I'm joking when I say this. But, 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 but the thing is, the reference point is something amazing. So stop comparing yourself to people because you don't know what they got. You don't know who they are. Hey, I'm trying to be the best Calvin I can be. I don't care if everybody else is messed up. I'm not trying to stop for everybody else. I'm not trying to hold myself back for everybody else. I'm not trying to be okay for everybody else. And sometimes that means I got to leave some people behind. I love you, but bye-bye. I love you, but sometimes you have to kiss your past goodbye. I love so, See, because you love people today don't mean the same people going to take you into your future. And that don't mean you want to get some new people. Now, sometimes, you know, you got to understand which one, you know, you got to hear God. LeBron James, what he did is he got all his boys. He educated them. And they became better and boom. So he allowed the same people, right, to be in his, you know, but he advanced and they got better. You get what I'm saying? That's a whole other story. Amen. But you got to understand that at the end of the day, we got to be the best people that we can be. And that don't mean everything that's around us today is going to stay around us. But we're going to push. And we're going to press. And we're going to allow God to do what he do. Amen? Amen? Now, it says that, and the Lord said to Cain, why are you mad? He said, why are you wrath? Why are you wrath? And why is your countenance falling? If you do well, you should be, shall you not be accepted? 
And if you don't do well, sin lies at the door. That's what I'm going to talk about. See, when you begin to walk outside of God's will, then you about to walk in the sin. Bible says, he who know to do good and don't do that, that's sin. So when you're walking outside of God's will, you're about to walk into some sin. And so sometimes we think, just because I ain't doing nothing crazy today, I'm okay. I can just be okay. I can, but you got to do it the way God say do it. That's why you got to find out the will of God for your life. Sometimes you just got to come and say, God, what you want for me today? How you want me to act today? How you want me to respond today? You just got to start praying about every God. Help me. Then when you mess up, you got to say, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. But get me right because I want to be the man. I want to be the woman that you called me to be. How many folks just want to be all that God called you to be? When I, when I look at the life of Cain, Cain walked in greed. You, you might not see it, right? But, but, but Cain walked in greed. He wanted stuff. He didn't give God everything because he wanted some of it too. Cain walked in selfishness. He was his own reference point. He made a decision on what was good. He didn't, act, he didn't say, God, I'm going to respect what you say is good. He made his own decision on what's good. He was selfish. Cain walked in with Bill. He literally had a, he had the audacity to rebel against God. And let, me, let me throw some scriptures at y'all so y'all can understand where I'm coming from. Look, look at 11, um, Hebrews 11 and 4. Hebrews 11 and 4 says this. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. And so one of the things, if you notice, that, that, that Abel did this by faith. Cain did not walk in faith. He walked out of faith. And when you start walking out of faith, you start walking in those things that we talked about. You start walking in selfishness. You start walking in rebellion. You start walking in greed when you start walking in faith. Turn to Jude. Now Jude only has one chapter. So you can just turn to the first. Turn to Jude 11. Jude 11. All right? Jude 11. Here's what it says. Woe to them. Woe unto them. For they have gone in the way of Cain. Yeah, you see what the Bible says? They have gone in the way of Cain. Now, how did it say it? They ran greedily after error. Of Balaam. So what happened? So, so you got to realize that the Bible says that the way of Cain is being greedy. So that's why I say Cain walked in greed. Y'all get where I'm coming from? Right? Not just that, but, but after the reward of Balaam, Balaam wanted God to give him something for the blessing. He said, God, can I, can I get the blessing from them? Because they about to pay me some money for it. Can, can I go ahead and I know I know I can't do this without you, but can I can I can I can I bless them because they want to be blessed because they're gonna pay me to be blessed? Can, can I curse the children of Israel because they the people are trying to pay me to curse them? Because they know that you're the only one that can 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 I they, they, he was trying to get blessed to see how messed up that is. He was trying to that's almost like me saying, I'm gonna do this. So y'all can pay me. I'm going to tell you something. You cannot do this that I'm doing for money. Because it is impossible for me to do this for money. And come and give you the word of God. Because I'm going to give you the word that you paid for. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? That's why men of God got to make sure they walk in integrity. That's why I think it's all right. Because the first few years that you're going to need to get paid. I ain't saying you might not bless them a little here and there, you know what I mean? But I'm saying as far as a full salary, they, got, they need to at least go, you know, because they need to do this out of their heart. Because it's different when you're doing it for free. 
It's different when you, you, you know what I mean? It, 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 it hit different. When you're doing it for money, they give you all this money. I guarantee that's the things you won't say. But when they ain't paying your salary, you don't care what you say. Why? Because I'm going to stand on God because he's the one who's blessing me. Amen? But when people bless you, boy, you'll, you'll change. Stephen A. Smith, he was bad. He was just talking bad. One, woo, he was just saying what he thought he wanted to say. But one day, he done said the wrong thing. ESPN said, you are on suspension. He watched his mouth ever since then. Now he think he, he not the same. He understands it's some parameters to how far you can go. You can talk big and bad all you want. But that person who's paying your check, they control what you say. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? That's why the Bible says the, 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 the borrower is slave to the lender. You got to watch. Who, you know what I mean? That's why you got to make sure, hey, 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 I got to make sure I get my finances in order because if not, then I'm going to be slave to the person who cut my check. I'm going to walk in bondage to the person who cut my check. So watch yourself because we don't want to walk in selfishness. We don't want to walk in greed. We want to walk in God. Amen? So it says that they walk greedily after the era of Bella for reward and perished. In the game, say, of Korah. And if you want to talk about that, that's basically Korah, they rebelled against what God. God said, do this. And Korah, they wanted to do a different thing. And God had to kill all of them. Because they wanted to just do it their way. When God say, go do it, you do it. But if God say, stay, you stay. You don't worry about it. I feel it might be crazy, but I'm just going to do what God called me to do. One thing, if you do understand uh, 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 this young man too, look, look, I think it's one more I want to do. You know what I want to do here? Uh, I think it's 1 John 3. 1 John 3. Which one I want to read? 1 John 3 and... I'm, I'm going to hit that one next week, amen? 1 John 3. But, but the thing is, I want you to get is that Cain did not walk in Love. He does not walk in faith. Right? And those are the things that you gotta walk in if you want God to do what he's gonna do in your life. Can, can, I, can I say why we gotta walk in love? And, and how do I know Cain didn't walk in love? Look what he did to his brother. If he loved his brother, he would have never got jealous. When you love people, you don't get jealous. If Bridge made a hundred thousand dollars more than me, I'm not gonna get jealous. Know right. why? Because it's our money. <laughs> when I was making it, it was ours. So when you make it, it's ours. You get where I'm coming from? Both of us had access to all my money. And so both of us gonna have access to all her money too. Amen. But my thing is, at the end of the day, you can't be jealous of people you love. You and I'm through the reason I'm bringing, you got people in a marriage. That's jealous of each other. You got people that, that, that's mama and daughter that's jealous of each other. Not child, amen. You got people, you know what I mean? I'm not here other places, amen. You got people that's brother and sister jealous of each other. You got people that's working for each other, but they jealous of each other. I mean, I'm glad I can tell y'all ain't like this. You got musicians that's working, you know what I mean? The drummer jealous of the keyboard player. The keyboard player jealous of the drummer. The day both of them jealous of the guitar player. They just all got problems. Look at each other funny all the time. And you, you think they just really try to get each other right? No, they just jealous. That spirit of jealousy will mess any relationship up. But instead of walking in jealousy, you got to walk in love. I'm going to tell you why. Because when you're walking in the promised land, it ain't about you. See, just because God has given us the promised land, don't mean he's just giving us the promise land for ourselves. Think about what I talked about last week. The first person they met in the promised land was a prostitute named Rahab. They met a prostitute named Rahab, and God wasn't just sending them to the promised land just so they could get a blessing, but he had Rahab to get the blessing too. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So what I'm telling you is that you have to be cognizant of how God wants to bless people around you. And you can't look at them any kind of way. 
You can't look at people like they less than. You can't look at people like they, they, they beneath you. You can't look at people. You gotta understand that this is a child of God, and I'm gonna respond the way God wants me to respond to this child. God is a God of love. He's a God that comes through for you. He's a God that cares no matter what. And he wants us to be the same. He don't want us to have rebellion, jealousy, hatred, selfishness in our heart. He wants us to walk with a heart of love. The promised land is going to show you love. When you start walking in the promised land, God, we're going to know who you are. When you start, because see, the, 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 here's how I know because see, some of us ain't even going to make it to the promised land. Cain didn't make it to the promised land. He got kicked out of where he was supposed to be, and he had to walk in a whole nother realm. And God had to protect him where he was. Here's what I want to, ain't no sense in us being in church and not getting all that God got for us. There's no sense in us walking in church and, and not living like God wants us to live. Man, why in the world am I running around here driving a Pinto when God wants me to ride in the Tesla? God wants me to ride in the Rolls Royce. He wants me to ride in, 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 in that Porsche. I ain't talking about the regular Porsche. I'm talking about the one that, 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 that's, that's all electric. And got a sound of a motor, you can just cut the motor sound off. So it sounds like a real car when you want it to, and it'll just when you don't. He wants us to be blessed beyond measure. We don't have to settle for less. But I'm gonna tell you something about us. The reason that the blessing is gonna be so amazing because it's not gonna mean much to us. See, see, when it don't mean much to you, if God ever asked for it, you can give it up. It meant too much to Cain. The plant meant too much to Cain. So he only cut a piece of it off. And he gave a piece of it to God because it meant too much. Don't let something mean so much to you that you're not willing to give it to God if God asks for it. That sheep to some people, they want to kill the sheep because you know how when we grow up, you got a, you got an animal. You're not finna sacrifice that animal. You don't want mama to kill that. And some people, you know, that grew up on farms or different things, they know what I'm talking about. You, you don't want nobody to kill. You know, think about if you had a pet rabbit and somebody wanted some rabbit soup. They can't kill your rabbit because you fell in love with that rabbit. You can't fall in love with stuff. That's why the Bible says the love of money. Not 